Hello everyone, today we're talking about relationships, we're talking about the men in your life and, the, and we're going to talk to men on how they can be better lovers, better men and we're going to talk to women how to understand men better on today's episode of the One Year Life Transformation. Hello everyone, super exciting topic, speaking about men, men in love and how love and men work. If you're a man, there'll be some interesting stuff on how you communicate and how you can show love. And for women, a great way to understand men and maybe some of the um, little challenges we have understanding each other can be solved today. Big call, but we'll start with a quote and we'll move through and see how we go. And that quote is, women are not meant to be understood, they are meant to be loved. Oscar Wilde. Women are not meant to be understood, they're meant to be loved. If every man had this in his wallet, there'd be no fighting with women. <laughs> there would be no arguing. Trying to understand women, and women embody, you know, from so many sacred scripts, and I find them is women embody mystery, uncertainty. They bring life into the world from who, you know, from where, from spacious areas, you know, like they if you understand them, congratulations. I mean, the great Sigmund Freud once said that he, you know, in his entire life, the greatest mystery for him to be understood is the mind of a woman. And men, come on, like, we should understand by now. We've, we've, you know, we've built rockets and sent them to uh, the moon and, and landed men on the moon. And we did that in a, probably a 10-year period of taking it seriously. And yet we've been trying to understand women for thousands of years. Let's, let's stop and just start loving and appreciating who they are rather than trying to understand the mechanisms behind you. So... My personal story is, is that as I you know, started dealing with women, I looked for mentors and role models, and I had some role models and mentors. I probably look back on and think, gee, that wasn't the perfect concept. I grew up, especially with political correctness being really important. You know, women have been treated so poorly you know, in previous generations. When I was born and grew up, you know, there was rightly so, there was a little bit of like a, come on, you know, this has been junk. You know, but what we did was we threw the baby out of the bathwater. We said, listen, men need to be this way and everything will be fine and what we've found is things aren't fine so what i would do is i find myself being overly nice i find myself not really treating women like equals i would be putting them on a pedestal because i would think about the way they've been treated in the past and what would happen would be a disconnect you wouldn't you can't connect to someone you put on a pedestal you can't connect to someone that you think is perfect because they're just not women are humans men are humans we are equally different and when we come together, that is when we create, we cover all areas of life. We cover connection, balance, love and life on the female side, direct, linear, breaking through, um, creating passion and, and destruction on the, on the male side. When I say destruction, I'm talking about the eastern form of destruction, which is creating room for the new. And this created so many problems. I found myself in you know, just not being a man. And what happens is really important for men to understand. Being a man is what attracts women. That's it. Being a man is what attracts women, is the polarity and duality. And the minute you stop being a man, start looking to be a friend or, or take on more feminine qualities, it may be good for a little while and you may get along and you know, start sharing you know, conversations better, but ultimately the attraction will die. So how, how, what are four ways that we can really improve this understanding? So what's the, the big ideas before this? Well, the big idea, number one, is your purpose must come before your relationship. This is truth. Men are different and men are about purpose that direct drive to solve the problems of the world to fix things to get involved in things and to be that best to break through boundaries and become better than they are is what it means to be a man when you are in your purpose and when you're doing great things you're a better lover you're a more caring partner you're better at your relationships when you focus directly at your relationship you fail because you lose what it means to be a man and yes you might sort out some conversations and some problems but ultimately attraction is lost and if you want them to be your friend absolutely go down the path of you know giving up everything that's important to you for them but if you want them to be your lover and you want to stay with them you must Go after your purpose. And this is true. So many people go, oh, women are always like athletes and, 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 and rock stars and movie stars because they're you know so handsome and rich. It's, it's not true. It's not true. Women love men who have purpose. And what do rock stars, athletes, and movie stars have? They have purpose. They obviously have purpose. The old saying, women love a man in uniform. Women do love a man in uniform. It doesn't matter what the uniform is, which is weird, right? Because you think some uniforms, no, it's because that man has purpose. If you're wearing a Marine's uniform, 
women don't necessarily think it's great that you're out there shooting guns, but what they know is that you've got something to do, and that is the attraction behind that. Big idea too, don't force the feminine to make decisions. One of the great things about being a man is being direct and clear. And what we found is because we want this, this hashtag equality thing, we think, well, every decision should be 50-50. Now, that would be true if men and women weren't different. But men, you will decide to go on the hunt. Men, you will decide to make quick, accurate decisions based on whether the mammoth was left or right. Whereas women like to mull things over much, over much longer periods. They like information and advice. And what you have to understand is by asking women to make the decisions in a relationship, where should we go, what should we do, they don't approach decision making the same as us. It's a bigger deal for them. They need to think through past situations on how they felt. They want to you know, think about what other people do or say or what they have to wear. It's a big deal. And you're putting so much pressure on them by making decisions and ultimately it evaporates the love and trust because as a man, you should be making the decisions. And then you should be looking to your partner or to the woman in your life for how that has increased and beautified their life. If your decisions are hurting your partner, you need to adjust. If your decisions are growing your partner, then you know you're on the right track. Big idea three, what she wants is not what she says. Men, understand that for as long as, you know, most of history, women have been told they can't do this, they can't be sexual, they can't be powerful, they can't be aggressive, they can't enjoy things that men do. It's been ingrained into them. Therefore, when they say what they want, they can't tell the truth because it will be held against them. You know, imagine 50 years ago if a woman said, listen, I love sex on TV she would have been stoned almost, you know? And ultimately, women do want sex, but they had to hide that fact for so long because of the way they would have been seen. And unfortunately, it still carries on today. So under, so men always find it so confusing, but she says this, but she does that. Well, once again, actions are more powerful than words. Don't look for the meaning behind the words and look for the results. Look, ask them how they feel, because how they feel is directly proportional to the moment. Don't ask them what they want, because you may very well just get information that isn't what they really want. And, and be compassionate, you know. Men, we haven't had to deal with this. We've been able to say what we want for so long. Understand that women haven't had that luxury. They're not lying. When they say, oh, I want a nice guy, but keep going out with blokes on Harley Davidson's with tattoos who, you know, drink too much. You need to understand they're not lying. They're, they're simply using the conditioned protocols that they've been told as a little girl. And unfortunately, it creates creating problems. Big idea four, you are responsible for growth. Your, your partner is responsible for intimacy. If you're not growing as a man, you will not grow intimacy. If you are sitting on the couch, drinking beer, getting in beer gut, intimacy will fall over. The responsibility of intimacy, leave that to the woman. She is beautiful, unique. She was built with more oxytocin receptors. She understands the power of touch, love, and communication that our little male brains can't even comprehend because they have it in their body, in their knowing, in their spirit. You need to simply be growing as a man, becoming the best version of a man, and the intimacy will flourish. And women are here to test us. They are here to test us, and no one tests you like a woman. I don't know if you're anything like me, but when a woman is, you know, what we call nagging, it's full on. They're not nagging to nag, they're nagging because they want to see you be the best version of you, because what they know in their heart is when you grow as a man, they become more attracted to you and intimacy grows. It's not easy. But we need to unwrap some of these challenges that have been created by the external world and go back to being this incredible dual force of men and women, because together, men and women can achieve anything something to think about. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Until then, goodbye.